What's happening guys, Max here. Hope you're all doing well. In the past few years, I've been stuck on this strugglesome workhorse of a machine, a third generation i7 HP laptop. Chipping away through footage, bringing you the cool content you've been watching up until now. Using the laptop for editing videos, it is running too slow for my current needs. So now after having saved up enough for a faster PC, I decided to put my money into building a desktop video editing machine to suffice for post-production and YouTube work. So without wasting another second, let me bring you in for a closer look at the parts I purchased for this cool PC build. Things are gonna get exciting! I picked up what seems to be a pretty standard dual door tower PC case with some style to it. Bought 500 gigabytes of storage on a solid state drive, 16 gigabytes of memory, MSI Pro Series 10th and 11th gen compatible motherboard, 10th generation Core i5 processor with an included cooling fan along with thermal paste. The GTX 1650 Super graphics card with 4GB of video memory, 500 watt power supply, and a cheap color changing gaming mouse to go with a similar style RGB lit keyboard. So these are the parts I'll be working with to build the PC. Focusing on the motherboard included in the box is a pair of SATA hard drive cables, I.O. shield, sticker, and instructions on a CD. Let's start by installing the two 8GB sticks of memory into the available slots, giving the PC quite some high performance with 16GB of total RAM. Next up, installing a form of storage, a 500GB solid state drive which will be cooled with the help of this heat dissipating heatsink plate. Yep, these things get pretty warm. Now for the powerhouse of operations, the processor, the Intel i5-10400F, a great budget friendly 6 core 2.9 GHz CPU without built in graphics. This is no downside as the PC will have its separate graphics unit, the GPU. The CPU has a specific socket type known as the LGA1200 socket. This is an important thing to note when picking out a motherboard to suit the CPU. After clipping in the CPU, we can mount the included pre-thermal pasted cooling fan onto the processor and connect its cable to the board. With the parts we've attached on so far, things are ready to be bolted. Taking a closer look at the PC case, I was fortunate enough to get it with a pre-mounted 600 watt power supply unit with all the right connectors, leaving me with the one I'd previously bought now as a spare. These connectors here are for connecting the front buttons, USB, and audio ports straight to the motherboard. The case even seems to have two areas for mounting hard drives. This will come in handy. So the motherboard's included inputs and outputs metal shield here will simply clip into place on the rear end of the case. Laying the case on its side will help with installing the motherboard, but first it's worth checking to see whether any shield tabs are in the way of the ports before fixing it in place. See, there happen to be two in the way which are now bent away. Now we can bolt the motherboard to the case leaving us with only a few more parts to install. To make wire management easier, the right side panel also slides off for ease of access. Let's pull the two sets of cables through, starting by connecting the power supplies connectors to the motherboard. First goes the 24 pin main power connector, then the 4 pin 12 volt CPU power connector which clips in just up here. Next we can hook up the front panel USB LED and audio connectors to the motherboard's I.O. pins down here. For the system's cooling fan, I chose this standard 12 volt 4 pin brushless fan. Nothing fancy, though it'll do the trick. This connects to the system fan 4 pin motherboard header. The most powerful part to this PC is the graphics card. It's an EVGA GeForce GTX 1650 Super GPU. With 4GB of video memory, this gives good headroom for additional processing tasks such as video rendering working alongside the CPU. Depending on the monitor's video port type, we may need a video cable adapter for the GPU, as it has a couple of what I consider the less used ports and an HDMI port. 
The GPU will go in just this way, but before clipping it in, we must remove one of these metal tabs from the back for the ports to stick out from. Unscrewing this panel will give access to the GPU's mounting tab to slot into so the graphics card can have a firm connection to the case. With all of that in place so far, let's take a look at the adapters for the GPU. One is a VGA to HDMI monitor display adapter, the other being the GPU's power adapter cable. Connecting the power supply's 4-pin Molex connectors to the GPU, this is where the dual Molex to 6-pin adapter plays its role in distributing the right power. Back to the other side of this PC, we'll do some more cable management with zip ties to tidy things up. And even a bit from the inside. This VGA monitor cable simply connects with the adapter shown earlier to plug not into the motherboard's HDMI, but into the graphic card's HDMI port. Bringing over a suitable monitor onto the workbench, let's power things up. Once powered up, we're met with the BIOS firmware interface. We'll use it to check that all is working of what we assembled. From here, let's install Windows via a boot drive. Taking any USB drive with a capacity of 8GB or higher on another PC, we're gonna need to download the Windows Media Creation Tool to install what's called an ISO file, which is the OS, also known as the operating system. For further detail on how this is done step by step, feel free to watch this video linked below on how to go about that. Fast forwarding to the prepared boot drive, inserting it in before powering up, then turning on the PC will meet us with this screen, asking for preferences on which Windows operating system version we'd like to install. I chose Windows 10 Pro instead of the new Windows 11, personally I just like my Windows 10 a lot more. Once it is installed, the system will ask some personalized questions before proceeding, then just like that, we got Windows. I thought this PC wouldn't be a proper full-time workhorse without extra storage, so let's give this machine two 500GB hard disk drives starting by installing them on the two panels I mentioned of earlier. The motherboard actually has not two, but six of these SATA ports allowing for more hard drives to be connected, but two of these will do for now. Also, the power supply only has these two hard drive power connectors available which will connect up to the pair. After doing a bit more cable management, finally we'll hook up the hard drives with data connection to the PC. As seen here, we've got the two paired to the computer and are working just fine. These two next to them are actually the main SSD with its allocated storage for backup. And now for the overview of the video editing machine we've built, standing tall with a total of 8 USB ports, audio ports, Ethernet port, GPU display ports for several monitors, 600 watt PSU allowing for headroom with future parts upgrades, plenty of remaining internal case space, vents at the front and sides for the cooling fan to blow air out of through the back, dissipating heat. Most of all, the 10th gen i5 air cooled CPU, 16 gigs of RAM, a 500 gigabyte SSD on an MSI motherboard. 4GB GTX 1650 GPU and a terabyte of additional storage on the installed HDDs. Kindly check the full list of parts used in this build with purchase links in the description below if you're interested in building yourself one like mine. So here's my current setup now having the PC fully assembled. I'll definitely change out the desk for something less flimsy and in the future I may even obtain a curved HD monitor. The PC is connected to the internet through an ethernet cable as the motherboard doesn't have Wi-Fi. Also hooked up the PC with my studio mic, a pair of speakers, as well as the RGB keyboard and mouse you guys have seen previously. The fans do make a bit of noise, but they're not disturbingly loud. 
To show its performance, I'll show you how it runs the heaviest programs I typically use. It opens Premiere Pro very quickly, as it does with heavy projects. To me, editing has never been as smooth as it is now, not experiencing any lag whatsoever when snipping and clipping or loading on GPU accelerated effects onto clips. Rendering is just a breeze. It managed to export a 10 minute section of this video in under 2 minutes, what normally takes 2 hours on my old laptop. This is thanks to the hardware encoding also known as graphics card rendering. This was a 1.5 gigabyte video. The graphics card plays a big role in running this program since Premiere has the option of utilizing GPU acceleration. Launching this program called CoreTemp gives an accurate temperature reading on all 6 cores of the CPU as well as the power it draws. Running Fusion 360 for 3D design, I no longer have graphical issues or the odd freezing up of the program that my last computer was causing. I can get back to 3D designing with speed and efficiency. Overall, I'm super pleased with my new setup. I can highly recommend one to consider saving money and getting higher performance by acquiring the right parts to build a desktop PC rather than going with a laptop. That is, if you can go without the convenience of having a portable computer. In terms of video production, this machine chops through video editing like a beast thanks to the graphics card with GPU acceleration. That's just one of the many highlights of using it. If you enjoyed watching, feel free to drop a like, leave a comment sharing your thoughts and input, and a subscription to the channel. Thanks for watching, see you soon with another one. Peace.